So the first session uh, is on India, and we do realize that it's, it's getting evening time in India, and uh, this is on navigating the metric diagnostic regulation in India uh, by Dr. Malati Lakshmi Kumaran, who brings close to 30 years of experience um, uh, with her. She is currently the executive director of Lakshmi Kumaran and Sridharan, uh, which is one of the leading um, law IP firms in India. And uh, uh, Malati uh, was uh, head of biotech in Terry. Those of you who don't know Terry, it uh, used to be called earlier as Tata Energy Research Institute. Uh, it is now called the Energy Research Institute. Uh, and uh, then before that, she was uh, an NIH fellow at the Fogarty Research Associate at NIH before she came back to India and started her work. Over the last many decades, I think uh, Malati has been advising multinational companies, startups, and SMEs. And if you are in India in the medtech arena, she is an integral part of the Indian medtech ecosystem. So welcome Malati, uh, 35 minutes. I'll let you know at 30 minutes, and uh, then when it's two minutes left. Uh, so. Uh, over to you, Malati, now. Yeah. Uh, firstly, let me thank the organizers, especially I mean, Satya. I've been working with Satya for many years, and this is a, a good opportunity for me to actually um, showcase what's happening in the medtech area in India. And I'm, my focus will be more on the diagnostic regulations in India. Uh, so that's good. But I might dwell into other things, but I'll try to keep... Um, what are the issues, what's the regulation, uh, especially in light of the diagnostic regulations in India. Can I have the next slide? Yeah, so this is where we are now. Uh, if you take, um, I've just given a very glimpse in very, to show that India is a large, it's a huge population, we are 1.3 billion, there's several people who are definitely in the, under the poverty line, but there are several of them who are all quite well uh, to have these medical devices. As you see, India is actually the pharma capital of the world. So if you think of HCQ, India has given, if you look at any of the drugs for HIV, India is the pharma capital. But what happens when it comes to medtech? We are not there in the scene. And we are importing a lot of medical devices and it, we need a lot, whether it could be stents, whether it could be kits and so on. And especially now that we are seeing in the pandemic of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're seeing that it is taking time for us. We need to import. The regulations are being changed quickly so that we can import the kits and also use them. So I will be talking about that. Basically, just want to say that we import a lot of medical devices and we have export which is very very small in number as compared to that of import and so it's a huge market for India and the India wants to start the Make in India campaign for the domestic manufacturing of medical devices and see what did we do in the pharma area that we did so well. Can we in, can we do that similarly in the medical device area? It's not going to be that easy, but I think the government of India is working very cleanly to see whether we can make in India the medical devices that we don't have to import most of them. So let's see what we are doing in that front. The next slide. I want to quickly go on to, yeah, you can keep on, uh, yes. What are we doing here? So I just want to quickly jump into the regulations. And as you see, the regulations are pretty new, recent in time. It's only we've had the medical device regulations or what we call as the MD regulation or the MD rules, which came in 2017. And it's actually being regulated under the Drugs and Cosmetics Act. So when I say DC Act, it means Drugs and Cosmetics Act, which is basically for the pharma and the cosmetic sector. And we've now clubbed the medical devices, and there is a lot of confusion 
And also the government of India isn't very happy that how is it a drug regulator regulating a medical device um, sector. So I'll come to that and see what's happening in that area as well. So let me go quickly. So we have the Drugs and Cosmetic Act, which we call it the DNC Act, but we also have the green thing, which is the device, rules. And the rules are the ones which are very important for us at this stage. But basically what I want to start is, what is it? What is the definition of medical device? What does it mean? It could be any substances used for in vitro diagnosis, surgical dressing, surgical bandages, and so on. I'm going to read all that. It could also be collection bags with or without anticoagulants and so on. It also could be substances including mechanical contraceptives. It could be disinfectants. It could be insecticides notified in the official gazette. So it's a wide, the medical devices actually also covers insecticides and disinfectants. So this is where we have the confusion. Now the devices could be notified from time to time under subclause four and also under subclause three, uh, subclause B of section three. This is very important for us. Now, if you look at the things for the purposes of these rules, substances used for in vitro diagnosis shall also be referred to as a medical device. So we have got here this confusion that how can a chemical, which is used for testing, be also called as a device. So these are going to be sorted out. Next slide. Uh, what I want to actually tell here is, Lauren, next slide. Um, so if you look at what is regulated, um, all, um, all devices, uh, all devices, including instruments, apparatus, appliances, uh, whether used alone or in combination, including a software or an accessory intended for its manufacture to be specifically for human beings or animals and blah, blah. But what I want to say this, this came actually only from the 11th of February, 2020 by the Department of Health and Family Planning and family welfare or family planning. And it actually comes under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. What they came to say is here, is it could be the medical devices could also include diagnosis, prevention, monitoring, or diagnosis, monitoring, treatment, investigation, replacement or modification or support of an anatomy of a, or of a physiological process. It could be supporting or sustaining life, the devices, disinfection of medical devices, and control of conception. Now the medical rules 2017 also sets out to regulate all aspects and activities relating to or pertaining to medical devices. What does that include? It could be manufacture of medical devices for sale or distribution. It could be import of medical devices or it could be export of medical devices, labeling of medical devices, conducting clinical investigation of medical devices. It could be manufacture, import and manufacture of medical devices, which do not have a predicate device. Registration of labs for carrying out tests or evaluation of medical devices. It could be for the sale of medical devices. It could be for the recall of medical devices and export of medical devices. So it covers a huge plethora of things, everything related to medical devices. Can I have the next slide? Um, so let's see what is regulated. Um, on the 11th of February, as my earlier slide said, the Department of Health and Family Welfare issued a notification for consultation with the Drugs Technical Advisory Board amending the medical device rules 2017 with effect from 1st April 2020. So you can see it's actually evolving and it's changing quite a bit day by day. Uh, the latest compiled list of notified medical devices along with their risk, that is whether what the risk category is, I will be talking about it, is available on the CIDESCO site. And CIDESCO is nothing but Central Drug Standards Control Organization. And so all these lists of notified medical devices are available on the website. 
and I don't want to go about it. How I just want to say this, and I've been talking with Satya about it, is there's been a lot of confusion and a lot of differences between Niti Aayog. What is Niti Aayog? Niti Aayog is like a planning commission. It used to be called planning commission before, but it's more a planning and a strategy group to advise the government of India on where should we go. It could be in every area that India, suppose India wants to do make in India for medical devices. It's the Niti Aayog or the planning commission would actually guide the government of India on what they should do. So they were a little upset and had differences with this uh, medical device rules or what does a DCA act and say, you are a regulator for the drugs and how come you are also doing the regulation for medical devices? And there was a lot of meetings between the Niti Aayog and the health ministry and they finally arrived at a consensus and they came out with a bill called as a medical devices bill. So even though we have just started this medical devices rule, which came in 2017, India is uh, having a relook after months of wrangling between Niti Ayo, which is a planning commission, and the health ministry. They've come out with something which is intermediary, which will help uh, the regulation of medical devices. This new bill, which is called as a medical devices bill, which is quite different from what we have, will enhance domestic manufacturing. It will be regulated by a separate division of Sidesco. It just comes under Sidesco, but not the drug regulator. It will be a separate division, which will look keenly and evenly at all the medical devices regulation. They will monitor medical devices by the technical experts, and it will be, even though it's not a separate regulator, but they will regulate the medical devices. So this new bill will come, the act will come, and as we go on, maybe in a, in a year or so, we should have a new act on the, or the rules on, uh, it's called as a medical devices bill. Can I have the next slide? Uh, what do I say by classification? The medical devices classification is very important. It could be the in vitro diagnosis, diagnostic medical devices, or the non-in vitro medical devices. Next slide. And how do, we, how do we classify them? It could be under classify A, B, C, D. Can I have the next slide? <clears throat> so let, just uh, click, click onto it. Next, one more click. Yes, no, go back. Go back, uh, yes, one, one click, yeah, let's leave it at this. Now this, if we, as I said, we have the IVD and the non-IVD. I'll quickly go to the non-IVD and then go to the IVD. We have class A, B, C, D. A is the low risk. B is the low moderate risk. C is the moderate high risk. And B is the high risk. So all these are on the risk category that we classify them as A, B, C, D. They could also be based on life supporting or sustaining was it invasive? How invasive? What is the extent, duration? Does it incorporate a medicinal product? Is it incorporates into human or animals? Is it an active medical device? Does it deliver medicinal products or radiation? Could it modify blood or other body fluids? So based on the risk category, you classify non-IVD as A, B, C, D. Can I have the next slide? So now I look at the class. Just click one more, Lauren. One click. Uh, another click. Oh no, go back, go back. Sorry. Uh, so the risk based classification for IVD again is A, B, C, D. And here the guide is on the incorrect result. If you have an incorrect result, which could actually be a problem on the health of the individual, based on that, you have class A, B, C, D. At present, most of the IVD devices, which is the in vitro diagnostic devices, are classified as BCD. They have not classified anything under class A. Class A is sort of exempted. You don't need to come to them. So none of the IVDs are under class A. They will all fall under class BCD. And these, the parameters for this in Schedule 1 is, is it an intended use? What is the intended use? Mainly, and what is the intended user? and the importance of the information to the diagnosis, screening, monitoring, 
depending on the stage of the disease, would you say it is stage one, stage two, stage three for cancer, all these would have an impact on what you would classify the in vitro diagnostic devices. The impact of the test result on the individual or the public health will actually drive the classification. Can I have the next slide? Now, what is covered? They have come up. The next slide. Next. What is covered for sure? I know I don't want to go through all these things, uh, but basically, it's a lot of the syringes, needles, stents, but also a lot of in vitro diagnostic kits, maybe for diabetes, maybe for infectious diseases, maybe for viruses, and so on. So it could also cover things like catheters, contraceptives, bone cements, orthopedic implants, surgical dressings, and so on. I don't want to go through all these things, but you know that the blood, blood components with coagulants, with anticoagulants, and so on. And it could also be like umbilical tape. So I just want to say that a lot of things are covered. It's on the website. And anybody who wants to know what is covered, you will get it. Can I have the next slide? Uh, what is covered is there. It is gone in stages. So as I said, we got the medical device rules in 2017. And they're learning as we're going. And several devices are getting covered as we go along. So if you see of 22nd June 2019, we had things like CT scan, MRI, dialysis machines, and so on. And if you see from 1st January 2020, we had nebulizers, blood pressure monitoring devices, digital thermometers, glucometers, and so on. So this list is there. It's exhaustive. It's there in the website. And as and when they have the wherewithal, the infrastructure to regulate these devices are getting added and will be covered under the regulation. And the regulation is called as medical device rules, which falls under the Drugs and Cosmetics Act. Can I have the next slide? Uh, what I want to take a break here, because India, it does take, even for a classification, class A takes 45 days for approval, and it could go to class D to anything like three to six months. And what happens with this pandemic? We are all there, we are seeing, and we are all living in this pandemic now. And as you see in India, we've crossed two million um, cases of uh, COVID-19 cases. And so India just cannot keep quiet. And so they had to quickly go because the COVID-19 kits are covered under the medical devices rules. And if you take so long, by the time, you know, how do we do the testing and so on? First of all, we had to import a lot of kits. And so when you took importation, it would take 45 days for you to get a license to actually validate and use the kits in India. So they said, yes, let's wait a minute. ICMR, which comes under the Ministry of Health, they said, no, we are going to do the validation. And it could be by several institutes which are there. We have more than 24 institutes or centers which will validate the COVID-19 kits. They could be ICMR institutes, they could be DBT institutes, they could be CSIR institutes or other institutes which are well-recognized institutes and research labs who can do the validation of the kits because you could be flooded with kits which are no good and they don't do the detection correctly and you could have a lot of uh, problems because of that. So the ICMR and DCGI decided to join hands because DCGI doesn't have the wherewithal, the infrastructure to validate the kits. And you need to do something in 48 hours or something in three days. So ICMR said, we open up all our institutes we will validate the, the kits and immediately give a license either for manufacture or for importation. And what were the kits for? They could be RT-PCR kits. They could be RNA extraction kits or VTM kits. They could be rapid antibody test kits, either for the antigen or the antibodies, ELISA, CLIA, and so on. But what they made very quickly was this. They said, if any of the kits is approved by US FDA, you don't need validation in India. But if a company X gets a US FDA approval in the US, the same company, if it wants to manufacture, wants to sell in India the same kit manufactured in the US, 
you don't need a validation and within 48 hours you will get the license and you can get it regulated and you can do the test kits first with the test kits and then test for COVID-19. So this was a very rapid thing. But you'll say, what about other? What about European? Like, see, he said, no, wait. All others, if it is from India or from any other country other than US FDA, you will have to give three batches of kits to this ICMR. ICMR, depending on where they want and where is the infrastructure and capacity, you need to give them these three batches, random samples. These will be validated. Once the validation is done, they will then be sent that it is approved or not approved. Nearly 50% of the kits were not approved. And then they go and you give a license to the manufacturer and it is done. So let us say that you have US FDA approval for a company X, but if that company X wants to use another company A in India or a company Y in India to manufacture, you will have to go through the same process of validation. But if it's the same company which gets the approval in the US and gets and comes to do the work in India without manufacturing in India, it's within 48 hours. So they did a quick thing, which was very good. They also gave a clarification if you want to import diagnostic kits for research use or, and only for academic research purposes, immediately Sedesco under the DCA Act, which is called as a medical devices rules, will give approval very quickly because you want to compare your kit with the other kits. Can I have the next slide? Now comes the US FDA, just quick. They have class one, class two, class three, whereas India has A, B, C, D. The next line. Um, yes, increasing. And in the EU, you have class one, class two A, class two B, and class three. Um, which is very similar to India of class A, B, C, D. Next, I don't want to dwell too much on this. Next. So I just want to see the basis of the classification. In India, the classification of A, B, C, D depends whether it's life supporting or sustaining, whether it's invasive, what is the extent and duration, whether it incorporates a medicinal product. Most importantly, in the in vitro diagnostic, the intended use and the intended user. Whereas in US, it's more risk to life. The history of safe use, harm to the harm, is it harmful to the potential user? So US is very risk-based. But if you see our classification, it's a lot like EU and US. So in the EU, it is duration of contact, Invasiveness of the device, very similar to India. The source of the energy of the device. So India has sort of combined the classification of US and EU for the classification of all medical devices, either IVD or non-IVD. Can I have the next slide? What are the basic requirements that we need here in India? So if you look at this, um, you have, uh, this called basic requirement, I don't know why it's not able to see here. If you look at India, you will be able to get a license for manufacture if you want to import or you want to do test license. As I said here in India, in the medical devices, even if you want to test your kit, you need to get a test license. They'll give you the test license within two days, within 48 hours, but without a test license, you cannot test, even do any testing. A lot of people don't realize this and they say, oh, we're only doing testing. A testing, not even in the trial, but just a simple testing, you will need prior approval. And this is where India is different. And so I want all the people who are coming in the medical devices, even if it's a COVID-19 test kits, you need to get a test license except you're doing something in research or academic purpose. The minute you say test license, testing, you need a test license. Uh, permission, even for clinical investigation, we call a CI or clinical trial. You need to go to the medical DCA Act. The, I'm not talking much about the non-IVD, but permission to manufacture will only be given after the CI is complete. And the CI data may not be required to be submitted. That is, CI is clinical investigation data, need not be submitted 
when the medical devices approved in UK, US, Australia, Canada, Japan, and marketed for at least two years in the country of origin. You'll see what happens, and that is why they had to come up with ICMR and DCGI had to come up with guidelines for the COVID-19, because you cannot say, has it been tested for two years? No, no, no. So they came down and said, we have special guidelines, ICMR guidelines, which will regulate or validate the kits for COVID-19 so that we can give quick licenses. And earlier on, only if you got your testing done, your clinical trials done, then you apply for manufacturing license. But what has happened in COVID-19, whether it is for a test kit, detection kit, like RT-PCR or an antibody, ELISA antibody test, you could actually start manufacturing as well. Apply for the test and even start the manufacturing because you don't want to have a delay that once you get your approval, the very next day you can be in the market, whether it was for vaccines, whether it is for drugs, or whether it is for medical devices. So these are the small changes that government of India has done when for COVID-19. Uh, can I have the next slide? Um, Satya, you have to tell me how much time I have, and accordingly, I will do it. You've got what 11 minutes. The, yeah. Um, what are the examples in India for IVDs? Uh, as I said, we do not have any examples in Class A because Class A is completely exempted. You do not have to go to the um, DCGI to get approvals. And therefore, we don't have any IVDs, which are in vitro diagnostic kits, falling in Class A. However, as I said, all these are available on the website, and it has come in um, May 2019. You have class B. So B, C, D goes on the basis of intended use, intended user. What would be the impact if you got a wrong, wrong information or a wrong result? Based on that, the classification has taken place, which I did discuss earlier. So if you look at class B, it could be testing in serum, body fluid, plasma, urine, which are very simple tests like the albumin test, the ammonia test, the cholesterol test, and so on. These are very simple, which is not going to have too much of an impact on the user, which would fall in class B. And so it could be like the bicarbonate test, the calcium test, or the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase test, the hemoglobin test, the ferritin test, the lipase test, the magnesium test, the zinc test. All these will fall. These are very simple tests. They're not for infectious diseases, but just to tell what is the level of urea, what is the level of zinc, what is the level of ammonia in the blood. These would fall under class B or the cholesterol test reagents. But let's look at class C. Class C is when you go to patient testing and detection of infectious agents or cancer markers. So it could be like diabetes, testing for sugar levels, testing for HbA1c, rubella virus, any of those test reagents. Test reagents in India fall under medical devices. We'll have to see with the new medical bill, medical devices bill, are reagents out of these or are reagents in this? And I must say that people should also be aware that when they import devices, import into India, the customs thinks of test reagents as a chemical. But the DCA Act or the DCGI thinks of test reagents as a medical devices. And that's where we have a lot of confusion. How do you classify these under the Customs Act? How do you classify them under the regulation of the DCA Act, that is the Drugs and the Cosmetics Act? And this is important. And all people who are into this need to look at it very carefully. Class D is for blood grouping or tissue typing or detection of transmissible agents. It could be like HIV kits. It could be rhesus system. It could be your HLA type of testing, uh, or it could be for AIDS and HIV. All the things which are required for detection of blood grouping, tissue typing, like HLA uh, test reagents, the kit test system, the Kel test systems, all fall under class D. 
because you don't want to make an error in these testing. All the HIV, the HCV, the HBV, the syphilis, the malaria, all come under testing under class D. And therefore, as it is important, how important it is for the end user or the intended user, you would classify them. Can I have the next slide? Uh, this is for non-IVDs. I will not do this. We are going to, I will be circulating my slides. Uh, Lauren can circulate it to people. It's just, this is in the non-IVDs, but these are depending on the classification A, B, C, D, you would classify them. We have what we call as a data protection in the medical device rules 2017. I don't know, the slides are not here, but I could quickly do. What is a new medical device? A new medical device will come under a new IVD or new IVD MD, and that will be regulated by the medical device rules referred in the, under rule section rule 3B, which has not been approved for manufacture, sale, or import, and is under testing that will come under the new IVD. When it is a non-IVD, then it is a medical device having a predicate device it will go under the investigational MD. And it is for the first time, first of its kind, not manufactured or imported or all classes. So this is called as a data protection under the medical device rules 2017. So when you have IVDs, which are already well known, no problem because you have all the data everywhere outside. But when you want, and this is the first time you're doing the test kit for an in vitro diagnosis, it has not been approved anywhere else or manufactured or sale or imported, then they would come under the new IVD class of medical devices. Now in the new IVD medical devices, these are under the information specified in part four of the fourth schedule. Now if Marty, you want- you have yeah. got three, uh, You've got three minutes left. Okay. If you have the investigational medical devices, you have grant of permission to manufacture, import, can only be done after the completion of its clinical investigation. So CI is very important. Clinical investigation is very important if you want to go either in the IVD or the new IVD. New IVD is when you don't have any of those similar or same type being manufactured, sale or imported into India. These information, whether it comes under the IVD or a new IVD, it was there in the part four of the fourth schedule. Very important, if a clinical investigation data is available or it has been approved in the UK, USA, Australia, Canada, or Japan, then you do not need to give the clinical investigation data. However, it has to be marketed for at least two years in the country of origin. Now that is other than COVID-19. For COVID-19, like India has allowed manufacturing of the Oxford vaccines or the test kits for COVID-19, even when they are in the validation test, even if they are new IVD, you can get for test license and you can get a manufacturing license as well. Uh, now, this permission is under Chapter 7. You have to conduct the clinical investigations and if the information is specified in any of the Part 4 of the schedule. So, for COVID-19, we don't need this two years, but only US FDA is approved. For all others, you need to quickly get your validated under the ICMR guidelines, under the ICMR institutes, which are 24 in number, and you can do it. Um, when we say that you need a test license, there's also an ethics committee. The CI or the clinical investigation will only be approved after the plan has been approved by the ethics committee. You need to register for the clinical trial registry of India. You need to give ongoing, you need to give the data. Completion, you need to give the data. And if there's any adverse event, you need to in inform within 14 days. So there are many of these things. I would now maybe stop with this. And if there are any questions, I will be happy to answer them.
Okay, thank you, Malati. This is brilliant. I think, um, you know, we had stopped at the 21st slide, but um, uh, what we will do is when we share the slides with the rest of the participants and put it online for yeah. public use, we, uh, we will yeah. uh, put all the rest of the slides together. Yeah. Uh, never, let me, let but me I kick, will give that. Thanks, yeah. yeah. Let me kick start the question and answer. We've got 10 minutes. Um, and actually, you, you did well. You, you stopped at 33 minutes, so, so that's fine. We've got two extra minutes left. Uh, the first question, you know, is to your start of the talk, you, you mentioned CDSCO, you mentioned ICMR, you mentioned ECIO. The, the question to you is, you know, in, in the next two years, what do you, so there are multiplicity of organizations that are really looking into it now, you know. So what do you think, will, that, will the med tech vertical of the regulation who is going to have the final oversight? I mean, is that going to be CDSCO? Is that going to be something else? Is, is all, will that be a different regulator altogether? So that's my yeah. first question. Yeah, so there, this has been the stock for the last one year. And the government of India is a little, uh, I think, upset that we got the medical device rules, but we are not doing much on that sector. And why haven't we got domestic manufacturing with a 1.3 billion people? We need stents, we need catheters, we need kits, we need detection kits. Why are we not there? And you could do so well in pharma. So that was the basis that the Niti Aayog said, we need to look into this. And there's a lot of wrangling that happened over several months, but now they've sort of agreed upon that yes, we will have a separate bill. It will not fall under the Drugs and Cosmetics Act, but there'll be something called as a Medical Devices Act, or now it's called as a Medical Devices Bill. And they've come to a consensus with after months of wrangling, and this will actually enhance domestic manufacturing, something which will be looked at by experts who are experts in medical devices, but not overseen by people who are experts in the drug and cosmetics. So there's going to be a separate division. We are not sure it may still be a separate division of CIDESCO because you don't want to have more multiple organizations, but it will be a separate act. It will be a separate bill which will monitor all the medical devices. It will monitor everything that I said before including manufacture, import of medical devices, labeling of medical devices, how do you conduct clinical investigations, export, recall, sale, everything will be. So it will be different from the DCA Act. When I say DCA Act, I mean Drugs and Cosmetics Act. So something as a medical device is coming under the Drugs and Cosmetics or something that people couldn't fathom. And that is where the Niti Ayo came into the picture. And I think very soon you will see there's going to be a separate act, which will be the Medical Devices Act, and separate regulator may come under CIDESCO, but it will be a separate regulator. Right. So, I mean, what you're hinting is that the situation is still fluid, but finally, DCGI, CIDESCO will have the oversight. Yes. I mean, most yes. of the agency but it globally. Will be quite separate from the DCA Act. Right. Right, we have uh, uh, you know, a couple of more questions from the participants. Um, I would request them to actually use the question and answer tab. Uh, there are a couple of them, I think, on the US FDA will take it in the last session. There's also one that is uh, you know, urging you to write a book, Malati, so there you go. But, uh, but here is a question from uh, Dr. Lini uh, Beso, and she says, uh, Malati, ma'am, any patch that is adherent type inside oral cavity can be classified in which class? So she's asking a very, very particular question about patch in the oral cavity. Um, what do you think, of course, you know, uh, this needs to be addressed. We will not be able to answer this quickly uh, because I haven't done in the IVD uh, non-IVD, uh, but I could give her the link, she could write to me and quickly look at it because there are about 300 and odd 
in the list and we will have to look at it. So offhand, I will not be able to answer your question. I could look at it and come back. Okay, so uh, Lili, please do get in touch uh, with Maluti and if you need the email ID, uh, it's there, otherwise we can uh, give it to you. Uh, there's also a question from uh, Anirudh from Jeeftronics. That's again for USFDA. Uh, Anirudh, I know it's late in India, but uh, have patience until the last session and then we will ask. Um, there are a couple of more, um, which is, so this is done. There's one question, Malati, and that is quite interesting, uh, which is, Okay, this is from Amy Desai. Um, it says, is the classification defined for a non-invasive diagnostic and therapeutic device? Uh, I'm not that certain what Amy Desai wants to ask. Amy, could you retype it or Malati, are you able to get the question? I'm not able to question, but you know, there are, the classification can be open to challenge because India is still learning how to do it. They keep looking quickly at US FDA or the European, which is C, and try to put it in the correct sector. Um, but if a dis device is classified under Rule 4 notification, you could go on RIT and do it. Um, okay. You could also do a self-assessment, can be done by the applicant, and give it for the authority for review. But it will be the decision of the authority whether they can go ahead or not, or appeal or not. Okay. There's another question from, Sub, uh, from Subham Kesarwani, um, and he asks, uh, what are the documents required for companies looking to apply for test and manufacturing license? Yeah, what so as I, said, yeah, as I said, there are different forms, and there are many forms, uh, MD1 to MD25, 26, and more on. And so you need, are you in for test license? then you need to apply for test license. If you are in an institute where you want to manufacture, then you have to get a license for manufacturing. Are you in a lab which is going to do the clinical evaluation or test or evaluation? You can get that. Are you into any clinical investigation or so on? Conducting clinical investigation on the medical devices, you need to have another one. So it is each of these separate activities will require a, a drug regulator approvals. But the simple one is when it's a test license, if it is for academic purposes, no problem. But if you want to test, a, test uh, you want to test, license, you need to get a test license if you want to do any testing. Okay. I'm not sure, Shubham, if I've, um, if I've clarified. But these are many, many of those go up and down and we can talk offline as well. Right. Um, Mari, there is another question from Amrut Raj uh, Jade. And the question is, what, what will be classification for software for the genomic data analysis with antibiotic resistance prediction? Yeah, so um, software, I have looked at um, the software space. Uh, so you need to do, there'll be a lot of devices which incorporate a software uh, within a device or it influences the use of a device. So I don't know what the software is. Is it only a software to do detection or is it, does it, can it influence the use of a device? And then it will depend on what classes it is. If it is a standalone software, which are not incorporated into a medical device itself, and they only provide an analysis based on the results of the analyzer. It shall be classified into the same category and what you're doing it, whether it's an in vitro diagnostic medical device, whether it controls or influences the intended output of a separate. So you really need to know whether it is incorporated into the medical device or is it a software which will be able to analyze your data and tell you oh yes, it is cancer, it is you know, stage one, stage two, or it is this, it's upregulated, downregulated. So I really need to understand more that. You need to check that. And right. if it's there, you will have to use the parameters for the classification. If it is in a device which is in class B or class E, then the software for that device would also be in the same uh, classification. 
Right, that's, that's quite related to um, what Muthu Kumar and uh, Venkata Chalapati is asking about AI-based diagnostics and its patentability. Uh, yeah, so it, it all depends, as I said, the diagnostic kits or AI depends. First, you need to check your diagnostic kit, whether it falls under B, C, and D. The in vitro diagnostic tests are not under uh, class A, so you need to see whether it is under class B, C, or D, um, as I told you before. Mm -hmm. uh, once you know where the device is, then you can do the AI and it will come under that. If it is used for self-testing, then you will have to put under certain classification. It can be class C, and you need to see how you want to do that. Uh, the real question is on, uh, on where your diagnosis is. Based on that, whether AI is only an addition, just like I said, a software, it will still fall in the same classification. Patentability is a different issue, and that will be a complete talk by itself. But if India does not allow computer program per se to be patentable subject matter, but as I said, if the software influences a device or it has a technical effect, just like at the EPO, then you can get a patent for that AI. So you need to understand what my software or my AI is doing. Mm -hmm. If it does have a technical effect on the device or on the subject matter, you can get a patent. But if it's just a computer program per se, then you, you will can't. get a patent. Okay, we're running out of time. One last question, maybe 30 second answer. And this is really a pertinent one, Malati. This is from uh, Srijan Jindal, and he is asking, what is the average cost for applying for certification for validating your IVD kit in India before starting the import? Please consider that the kit is CE approved. Yeah, as I told you, um, uh, if it is CE approved, I, I can't tell you the ballpark figure. I don't have it on top of my head. I could tell you later. Uh, if it is a COVID or it is non-COVID. So if it is COVID, India doesn't agree, approve C yet. It has to go through the whole validation. I'm not sure of the cost. I'll have to look at the cost. I'll have to talk to my colleagues to find the cost. I can't tell you offhand. Okay. If it is USFD approved, it's definitely lower because you don't have the validation and so on. I'm, I'm, I will have to find out the... I, it's a, it's, it depends from subject matter to subject matter, what is right. the level and everything. I won't be able to tell you now. Okay. So, Malati, thank you so much. Uh, you know, uh, we've just overstepped our 45 minutes mark. So, but again, um, you know, very energetic presentation as always. Thank you so much, Malati. And from on behalf of everyone, I'm, uh, you know, our appreciation. Thank you.